Well, good morning everybody. Today I would like to provide you with a super, super high yield review of concepts in renal pathology that are important for your both complex and USMLE examination. These concepts are also source of confusion for so many medical students. I assume most of you by now have reviewed our videos and read the chapter on renal pathology. The purpose of this segment is to provide you with an integrated drill of the concepts related to membranial proliferative glomerulonephritis. Let's begin with a representative case scenario as usual. Your patient is an 18 year old woman who is seen for the complaint of occasional vomiting, back pain, swollen ankles, and allegoria. She has a four-year history of arthritic joint pain. Previously, she has been tested positive for serum anti-nuclear antibody. On examination, she has a very high blood pressure. Urinalysis is significant for hematuria. Serology shows high blood urea nitrogen and creatinine levels. To confirm your clinical suspicion, you schedule her for renal biopsy, an immunofluorescence evaluation of the biopsy. Results of the biopsy shows tram track appearance of the glomerular basement membrane and subendothelial deposits of immune complexes. History of vomiting back pain, high blood pressure, oliguria, hematuria, high levels of creatinine and blood urea nitrogen together with subendothelial deposits of immune complexes indicate that the patient has a renal disease. The most relevant question however to ask is which of the two patterns of renal disease nephrotic or nephritic is confirmed with these findings. Pay a special attention to these keywords hypertension, hematuria, and allegoria. What do these three terms remind you of? They should have reminded you of our famous mnemonic of H2O. Imagine that the number two of the H2O is in superscript format to remind you of hypertension, supertension. And as you may recall, H2O was our famous, famous mnemonic for the classic triad of nephritic syndrome. Do you recall the major causes of nephritic syndrome from our lecture series in renal pathology? Do you remember our famous mnemonic of PEG rapidly progresses to HAM. Well, to refresh your memory, P of the PEG stands for post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. I stands for IgA nephropathy, which is also known as Berger disease. Well, what does the G of the PEG stand for? The G stands for good pastures disease. What does the rapidly progressive stands for? It stands for rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. So what can we do for the two of the pig rapidly progresses to ham? Well, two can stand for so many things. It can stand for the word two or for the two eyes of the nephritic syndrome or for the two entities of pig and ham or for the two ages that you see in the word H2O. So what does the age of ham stand for? It stands for Henach Shanlain Purpura. What does the A of ham stand for? It stands for this recessive kidney disease condition that we call it Alport syndrome. And finally, what does the M stand for? M stands for Membranial proliferative glomerulonephritis. What some of us may not know is what happens to that poor pig in the slaughterhouse and in the factory 
before it turns into a loaf of ham. Actually, substantial data supports the fact that the poor pig bleeds heavily inside the slaughterhouse, screams and begs for his life while turning into a loaf of ham. That blood is seen behind those hidden walls of the slaughterhouse can remind us of hematuria. That is the key, key, key finding in nephritic syndrome. Some time ago, a friend showed me a video narrated by Sir Paul McCartney with the title of If Slaughterhouses Had Glass Walls, Everyone Would Be Vegetarian. I have a short clip of it for you. If you like more of it, you may view a complete version on the web and on the YouTube. I have included this in my lecture, not necessarily because I want you to become a vegetarian. I'm not a vegetarian. And not because I am a Beatles fan, but to help you to remember my mnemonic of pig rapidly progresses to ham and associate that with the hematuria of nephritic syndrome. Hi, I'm Paul McCartney. I've often said if slaughterhouses had glass walls, everyone would be vegetarian. Animals raised on modern factory farms and killed in slaughterhouses endure almost unimaginable suffering. Pigs are more intelligent than dogs, even outperforming some primates on a variety of tasks, such as operating interactive video games. They have cognitive abilities beyond those of three-year-old human children. Yet, on factory farms, many will go insane from the stress, abuse, and complete lack of mental stimulation. Yes. Yes. Conditions are so dismal in today's pig breeding facilities that the sickness and death of piglets is common and considered acceptable by the industry. But many pigs remain completely conscious while their throats are cut. Back to our chase scenario. Which of the listed conditions that we covered with the mnemonic of pig rapidly progresses to ham is the most likely cause of the symptoms in this patient? Pay a very close attention to these keywords. Tram track appearance of the glomerular basement membrane and subendothelial deposits of immune complexes. They all remind you of the M of the ham, which is membranial proliferative glomerulonephritis. So MPGN is the correct answer. So let's begin a quick review of the highlights of the MPGN. There are two types of MPGN, mesangial capillary glomerulonephritis that is known also as type 1, and mesangial proliferative glomerulonephritis, which is known as type 2. There is also an uncommon type, or type 3, that is not as important for the USMLE or complex examinations. The only board relevant concept that you may like to know about the type 3 MPGN is that it is characterized by concomitant presence of subendothelial and subepithelial deposits in the nephrons. You need to know that all three types of MPGN may have either idiopathic or familial predispositions. Now, type 1 is due to abnormal immune response and subendothelial and mesangial antibody and immune complex deposition. In either of the two types, by two types I mean from now on type 1 and 2, mesangial cells increase in number. 
If you recall, mesangial cells occupy a central position in the renal glomerulus. They are modified, smooth muscle cells that produce cytokines and prostaglandins. They mediate inflammation. They produce and remove basement membrane and other matrix substances. They help with the uptake of immune complexes. And also, by the virtue of their contraction or relaxation ability, they are able to modify the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. As a general rule, MPGN is an uncommon cause of nephritic syndrome that mostly affects children and young adults. The type 1, as the name implies, is by far the most common and the most commonly tested one on the USMLE and complex examinations. Well, let us compare and contrast the type 1 and type 2 MPGN with each other. Type 1 is also known as mesangiocapillary proliferative glomerulonephritis. Note the stress on the word capillary in the mesangiocapillary. And as we will see shortly, in this type, there is a high level of immune deposits in subendothelial positions in the nephrons. In type 1, immune complexes activate the classic complement pathway and cause injury to kidneys. Whereas in type 2, the etiology of the disease is related to uncontrolled activation of the alternate complement pathway that leads to dense homogeneous depositions along the glomerular basement membrane and in the mesangium. Recall that mesangium is the matrix substance that is produced by mesangial cells. Also pay attention to the term homogeneous and dense intramembranous deposits in type Two, that makes the capillary loops ribbon-like and thick. As we will see shortly, this will help us differentiate type 2 and type 1 from each other cytologically. Finally, in either of the two conditions, 1 and 2, the mesangial cells increase in number and cause some levels of hypercellularity. Hence, you will see the keyword mesangial in the descriptive name of either of the two conditions. Incidentally, you remember which nephritic condition was presented with the most profound hypercellularity. I will give you a hint. Remember my mnemonic of pizza with lots of items on it. If you need another hint, I tell you. This condition is the prototype of the nephritic syndrome. If you have guessed post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, you are absolutely right. Before going any further, let us review quickly some basic facts of histology that may be relevant to what we have to discuss shortly and quite often and surprisingly they happen to be the source of confusion for some students. What is, after all, basement membrane? This is a layer of extracellular matrix found on the basal surface of epithelial cells and is also secreted by the epithelial cells. What is basal lamina and how does it differ from basement membrane. Quite often, these two terms are used interchangeably. However, the term basal lamina is usually used in conjunction with electron microscopy, whereas basement membrane is usually used in light microscopy. What is the location and function of the basal lamina? Basal lamina surrounds and lies beneath sheets of epithelial cells and in the lung and kidneys. It separates two types of cells, namely endothelial cells of the blood vessels and epithelial cells or the podocytes from each other. What are the three layers of basal lamina and how do they help to differentiate basement membrane from basal 
lamina. Pay a good attention to this diagram in here. These three layers, starting from the epithelial or endothelial cells, include lamina lucida, lamina densa, and lamina reticularis. Some histologists believe that basal lamina is composed of lamina densa and lamina lucida, whereas the basement membrane is composed of lamina densa and lamina reticularis. And as you can tell, no matter what description of basement membrane and basal lamina you subscribe to, they both have the lamina densa in common. What are the major chemical ingredients of the luminal layers? The two important ingredients are collagen type 4 and heparin sulfate, which is a GAG. GAG stands for...